Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting YouTube collaboration where several of us, including the creative design team and a few other friends, are celebrating 20k subscribers, so 20,000 subscribers for Erin Jacobson. A lot of you know her as Crafty Concepts with Erin. We all love what she does, how creative she is, how she pulls elements together and does layering and clusters and creates beautiful projects, both scrapbooking layouts and cards that I have admired for quite a long time and now I'm lucky enough to be on the creative design team with her and I'm so grateful that I can call her a friend. This YouTube collab is all about scrap lifting Erin to celebrate her 20,000 subscriber mark and I've chosen a fairly recent scrapbook layout that she's done. This is from Instagram but she does have a process video up on YouTube so I will link to that below as well as the playlist. We are all scrap lifting and projects that Erin has created. This is a fairly recent one that she has done using the current special that's on. It's called Love Notes. I loved this layout because I think it will work quite well. I'm doing a travel themed type style and a lot of stash busting. I'll just flip through what Erin has done with this layout on her Instagram page. You can see the gorgeous layering. I'm taking these sort of elements and replicating this layout somewhat. I will be tweaking it a little bit to suit my photos and also I'll be doing quite a bit of stamping. So I'm just going to keep this up on my table so I can refer to it and the paper that I have chosen is from the World Is Yours collection from back in 2019. So this is a holiday book that I have been working on for quite some time with a couple of friends of mine and I really need to get this project finished and hopefully do an album layout share with you. The first difference that I have is the project I'm working on today is an eight and a half by 11 scrapbook layout whereas Erin's is 12 by 12. So what I'm going to start with is just splitting this pattern paper in in half down the middle to go on each side of my base layer I'm going to use white and then I'm going to bring in some other elements to build up these strips going across here and because my photos are a little bit different in orientation to Erin's I'm going to use the same sort of concept here but I do need to change this one around a little bit I think so I'm just going to bring in the base layers and put that reference up here I will bring that back in at the end of the video so you can look at the differences so I've got my base layers of eight and a half by 11. And this is the pattern paper cut at six inches and I've taken an inch off the top here. But when I'm looking at this, the pattern ends here and then I've got the white space. So I think I might just swap this around. The other side has this peachy sort of floral look and that's not going to go with the photos that I've got at all. And I do love how this looks with the height here and joining up together of this pattern piece with the leaves rather than around this side because this makes this bit sort of look cut off and to me if I put it on the outside of the paper maybe that would work better because then your eye is led in by the height here and it graduating down but I'm really wanting to copy Erin's layout somewhat so I'm going to put these in the middle and I think that will balance out quite well. So I'm going to bring in my photos I've got a little echidna here that we spotted when we were going on our walk out to have a look at Pyramid Rock. This is down on Phillip Island. I've got a photo of us. So I'm thinking these ones go quite well together just like this. And this photo here is actually the view in the opposite direction of the coastline. One way we're looking at it being a bit dreary and grey and rain was about to come, but the other way was crystal blue and just beautiful to look at. But I love the stormy feel to these photos and it's hard to believe that I took these photos pretty much at the same time, looking one direction down the coast and the other direction this way. So I wanted to put that and I will journal about that. Now I'm just going to move my photos around a bit and if you can see Erin has two photos side by side and because this one is square it didn't quite work so I'm just putting the photo of the three of us up the top here and this area here Erin has a cluster here and that's just my photo element going there and on the right page she has four photos but I've really only got two so I'm going to build this out and do some stamping as well. Now I don't know if you're like me but when it comes to sometimes auditioning pieces of paper sometimes it doesn't quite 
flow as easily. Now I wanted to use the same papers from this original collection and I thought about putting the grey there but it sort of makes everything look a bit dull and then I thought about putting in a strip of these trees but the green and the green are fighting each other. So then I brought in this craft piece with the white line on it and I didn't mind the look of that but it's a very strong pattern. So I took away all the pattern pieces and decided that I would just go for some plain cardstock. So I've brought in rosemary even though it doesn't exactly match these leaves here I think the tone of rosemary is working quite well with this but I wanted to anchor these with a little bit of espresso. So I'm not going to bring in two large pieces of three inch cuts like Erin did here because I'm working on a smaller size project. I'm going to have one large one so I have cut this at two and three quarters by eight inches and this one is at one and three quarters by seven and a half. So this one's going to form a bit of a landing spot for my rosemary piece. It doesn't really need to be that wide. I just wanted to be able to play around with it if I wanted more of the espresso to show. And then I'm gonna mimic that on the left page. I might push this one up a bit more so more of the pattern comes through. So I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to do this and what visual lines I want across for my photos. And I quite like how that looks. And this is going to give me several areas to do my stamping and put my other in embellishments on. And for my journaling I've cut a couple of pieces of vellum. So this measures two and a quarter by seven and three quarters and that is going to go onto here and then I'm going to use a shipping label to do the journaling and Erin is the one that put me onto those. I really love them. A lot of the times when I'm doing one project I'll take notes for what I want to say when I'm constructing the page and then I'll type up the journaling but I'll keep it in a document ready to print out with all the other journaling for an album like this because then I can get the most conservative use out of the shipping label and get all my journaling printed at one time time and adhere it on. So there are a few less elements on here paper wise. Erin has this gorgeous newsprint type paper that's from the Love Notes collection coming out from the sides of her pattern paper piece here. Instead of doing that I'm going to do some stamping and I'm diving into my stash of stamp sets. I'm going to use change of scenery. I think worth the pause is going to work quite well. So I'll probably stamp that over this section here or I might even come in because I've got this natural little spot for it as as well. And then I've picked out some circle stamp sets that sort of relate to compass points. So this one, Adventure Badges, I'm going to use that circle element here. And this stamp set here was exclusive to the November 2023 album retreat. And I really loved this compass here and this one as well. So I'm going to be using those as circle elements coming out of this section here and also down into this corner as well. And I want to do a little bit of a test for my stamping. So I'm going to move these aside because I want to use rosemary and espresso as my stamping elements. So I'm going to get out a piece of scratch paper and my inks and I'm going to have a little play with how I'm going to layer up all those circle elements. I've done a little test run here of how I want this to look. So I've decided what generation stamping I want for each ink. I'm just going to put a little pencil mark under here and up here so that I know where the edges of my paper is because I want the stamping to come out from the edge. So the first one I'm going to do is first generation pine with this compass type one and I don't want them all to be totally vertical each time. So this one's going to come out from the edge and then I'm going to use some espresso. I'll just turn my ink pads around. So when you get your ink pads, there are labels on the front. Oh, this is actually toffee. So there are labels on the front, but there are also labels on the edge. So because they're magnetic, that will sit together and I can have the label pointing towards me so that I know exactly which ink I'm using. Now I decided that the first generation of toffee with this one, because it's fairly solid, was a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna stamp off and do a second generation for this one. And for this stamp here, I liked the look of the second generation inking with this. So that one I'm gonna put up here. 
I've used espresso. I'm just inking that up in shortbread. I quite like how that looks. Maybe though, I'm just changing my mind while I'm thinking about all of this out loud. I'm just gonna see what this looks like. So first and second. I really love the second generation of that. So I might bring some of that in I'm using rosemary. So stamp off. I have another little one of these peeking out. I've just angled it slightly. So I don't think I'm going to use shortbread at all because it brings in a fairly yellow tone. And then I think I will do another couple of these and I'm going to go off the edge of the paper. I'm going to do it again with a rosemary ink and I'm going to do second generation, I think. I love the look of that. So one, two, and then I'm gonna have another one of these coming down from the top and out of this section as well. And then I'm going to try and line this up with the actual piece of paper. So I'm going to adhere my paper down and then come back and do a little bit more stamping with my... I've adhered my main piece of pattern paper down and I love how the stamping is looking going out of the edge of that. But I do want to replicate some of it onto this piece of pattern paper. And the same with this left side, although I will have a photo going over this area, so I may not need to do that one. So I don't think I need to do any stamping on this left page, but I want to do it on the right page. And I've got a piece of scrap vellum here that I'm going to push over top and that will help me line everything up. I'm just gonna anchor it here with a stamp pad and this will act as a mask so that I'm not stamping again over top of this image here. So I just need to ink this up, work out which way I angled it. So I've got five, six, seven and see if I can get this to work. Now you will have to get your head right over the top of something like this to make sure that you've got it all lined up. Just stamp off here. So I do have the five in that position and then line this up. And now that I've got it all lined up, I can stamp down. Let's have a look at how I went. It's not totally perfect, but that's fine. I quite love how that looks. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this top one up here. So I'm just gonna put a piece of copy paper up there so that I don't stamp onto my Versamat. So I wanna make sure that I get the nine and 10 in the right place. I can see those through here. I wanna make sure that I get this all perfectly lined up. This was a second generation one. So I'm just gonna stamp off, line this up and stamp onto my pattern piece. It's looking pretty good. I'm really liking how this is looking. I didn't know if I'd be able to get this right on camera. I am editing out where my head is going for this because I don't want you to see the back of my head, obviously. So now I'm going to line up this one and this was second generation espresso. So I can see the U here. And using the vellum, because vellum is not too high, I'm still able to see through so that I can line up my stamps and make it look like I've gone right across the page here. Now I am gonna be stamping a title onto here, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna assemble everything before I do the rest of the stamping. But this element here is replicating this sort of newsprint area that Erin has here, just to bring in a little bit more of a decorative element into this corner. I've adhered my strips down and these two photos here are resting directly on top of this strip. I'm just going to add a little bit more adhesive on this one. And then for my vellum, I'm going to put that underneath these photos. And I did stamp on this. I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but it does show up. I've used this compass type image here, and I'm going to adhere that direct on top of my rosemary, and I can see the outlines of it. I've just random stamped it all along that vellum piece. But what I wanna do is just add some adhesive where I know my photos are going to go over top so that it hides the adhesive. This piece here at the end, I think I'll probably secure with a sticker, but even if I don't, because that's going into a page protector, it won't actually pop up at all as long as I slide it in fairly carefully. So now I'm putting this photo in there and then I'm gonna do the same for this one so that I can attach my vellum 
And because I've got two photos, I can put a little bit more adhesive there. And I've stamped on this one as well. So I'm just centering that onto my rosemary piece. Now, when you stamp on vellum, my advice is to put it aside to dry for a little while. It's a very warm day here where I am, so it didn't take much drying time. But I just set it in front of the fan to help dry it off a little bit. But the vellum softens this piece of rosemary and I quite like the depth that these two pieces add to a fairly muted tone background which helps make the photos pop. I have some die cuts here and I've also got some stamped images that I'm going to possibly put on here as well. There were some triangle die cuts in The World Is Yours and I'm thinking that's going to go rather well especially with this pyramid rock photo. I've just taken away the sticker part from around the outside of it so I can see the size of this a little bit better but I'm thinking I might tuck that one down a little bit so that you don't see that word and then I've got this one here I'm thinking of replicating something similar over this side so I'm just going to tuck these in for now put a blue one as well so that can come out from the edge and I've got another little triangle here. I think I'll put that there. And then this Explore, I think that is really good to go here. But I did want to stamp on here, Worth the Pause. So I'm going to adhere these down and then do the stamping. My stamping for this is going to be in Espresso ink. I'm going to bring back this scratch piece of paper here, make sure it's all stamping up correctly. Sometimes it does take a couple of goes, even when you've used it before, to make sure that you're getting the right consistency that you want. Bring this down closer to myself. I'm going to nestle that in this section here so that that line is along the edge of the photo and the words are going to go over top somewhat of this stamping that I've done previously of all these compass images. I love how that looks. I love all this stamping and I've just noticed I've put this down rather crooked. So when you're peeling things off, just do it gently and then you're able to fix things down properly. Sometimes it's better not to press down too firmly at the start and then you've got time to be able to lift things off because quite often I'll adhere things a little bit crooked and I don't notice until I step back and have a look later. So now all that's left to do really for this layout is to adhere these remaining little triangles and decide if I'm going to use any more stamp sets on this. I've got one little triangle left over but I like the odd numbers but I think it'll work if I add it to this side. And I have some word art elements that I'm going to add to this page from these stamp sets that I had out earlier. And I think what I'm going to do is put that across the top of these. I'm going to use espresso again. If you don't have the right size block, put your words or whatever you're stamping up at the top. And rather than inking up right in the middle, just go off the edge. I'm going to bring that down and nestle that across these pieces here. And I know I've got all different sorts of heights happening here, but I've got a spongy surface underneath, so I'm hoping this is going to work. But I wanna go across this triangle piece. So I'm just making sure that all the ink sinks in. I love how that looks across this triangle piece and across this pattern paper here as well. And then under here, I'm gonna use some of the other words. So I just have to decide what order I want to put these in. I think I'll put fresh air first. So that I'm going to nestle in right here. Outdoors is a little bit shorter. And this one's almost the same size. So I'm going to put outdoors directly under this one. And then wide open spaces. And I've made my own little piece of word art by doing that. And I think this brings the whole layout together. I'm not going to use this Explore because I've stamped my own piece of word art. I'm going to save this for another layout in this album. I'm just going to have another little look at these stamp sets. Now that I've done the main pieces, this is where I start looking at what else I could possibly add to this. If I want to put a little arrow across there, I think that might be quite cute. 
And then I think I'll stamp the month, year, date. Being in Australia, we do day, month, year, not month, day, year. So I'm just going to put that across this section. Maybe I'll put it up in here. And I'm going to do that in Espresso Ink. And I'm not going to use the foam side for this because these are fairly fine stamps. So I don't want them to smoosh out too much. And I've decided that I'm going to nestle this right underneath this little echidna here. And I'm thinking I might put this little arrow going all the way across. And I do need foam for this. I'm just going to use the one that comes from the stamp set. So this is really handy. You don't have to flip your Versamat over every single time. Some of it will get a little bit lost in this triangle, but I think it works really well with this sentiment. That looks very cool. So I'm going to call this layout done. And even though I do love journaling with my own handwriting, every now and then I love creating with the shipping labels. So here is the double page spread that I've scrap lifted from Erin. You can see it's similar to what she has done with the pattern paper strip on the inside edge and then some strips coming out from the side here. Because I'm doing eight and a half by 11, I don't have quite as much real estate, but I've replicated this cluster here of elements with some stamping and then then on the right page, instead of having this extra piece of paper here that was there for both of these, I've done some layered stamping instead of a piece of paper. I loved scrap lifting this layout. Erin has so many fabulous layouts that are a great jumping off point for getting everything kick started for your own layouts, whether they be in the same format as 12 by 12, or in this case, I'm using the eight and a half by 11 size. As I said before, there will be a playlist below, so keep checking over the next few days. There are quite a few of us joining in for this YouTube collab celebrating Erin's 20k subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.